Okay, I gotta be honest, I was never really into Mario games. Sure, I've played my fair share, and they were all... They were... Yeah, yeah. But due to Nintendo's evergreen business strategy, the price always seemed far too steep for a franchise that I was never really a fan of. Now to be fair, a lot of the times that pricing made sense. Breath of the Wild, anybody? But when it came to their main poster boy, arguably the poster boy for the entire medium, that never lowering 50 to 60 bucks price range just never really seemed like it was worth it to me. So when Super Mario Odyssey was revealed, it fell on deaf ears. Yes, it looked cool, but Nintendo's been releasing objectively quality titles for literally decades. Personally, I was convinced that Odyssey was not going to be different from the rest of the series. Plus, I didn't have a Switch at the time, so I definitely shot down any chance of excitement. However, just a few months after release, my cousin Josh showed me how much of an incorrect jackass I am simply by letting me play a little bit of Breath of the Wild, Kirby Star Allies, and Super Mario Odyssey. After that, I was a changed man. I was shown how fucking good of a game this was, and I just had to buy it. It is now 2020 AD, and I luckily bought my Switch Lite back in February before the second wave of the Great Switch Drought Pandemic. And now that I finally finished my Wii U copy of Breath of the Wild after it took literal years, I decided to finally get around to playing as the infamous plumber and see if this game is as good as everybody says it is. Spoiler alert, it is! What, you surprised? You didn't read the fucking title? Unlike other recent installments in the franchise, Super Mario Odyssey was designed more towards core fans, specifically the 3D titles like Sunshine. Apparently, Miyamoto wanted to reshift the franchise towards the core gaming market, instead of the casual market they dabbled in since New Super Mario Bros. And I've actually seen this disconnect firsthand. Pizza Mom is a pretty big fan of the games, but only when it comes to the new games on Wii and 3DS. The only other kind of game she plays were Smash and Mario Kart. So when I had her play Odyssey, she was fucking lost. I mean, yeah, she eventually got used to it. However, to this day, she's still surprised by the lack of lives and sole focus on open-ended exploration. But that's exactly why I love Odyssey. My personal biggest issue with platformers, specifically 2D ones, is the fact that you can't really take your time to enjoy the atmosphere. You can't slow down and run around and explore, or even just listen to the beautiful soundtrack. You're just expected to run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the plumbing man. I've put about seven hours into 3D World just over the past month or so, and I can't tell you one thing I really remember about that game. I can tell you which levels pissed me off the most, but I can't describe to you a beautiful piece of music or an especially fun boss battle. It's a fun game, don't get me wrong, but just not great. This also has to do with the fact that I believe traditional Mario games have become not bad, just comfortable with the same shtick. Besides the Galaxy and Mario Maker titles, I haven't really heard the overwhelming majority praise the newer Mario installments. So, to excite people far and wide, Nintendo decided to take it back all the way to the beginning. No, not that far. Yeah, that's more like it. Say what you will about the game itself, but Super Mario 64 was revolutionary. It took that standard formula from the bajillions of games that preceded it, and adapted it in a way that arguably improves on the formula, but also doesn't stray too far away from the original games. You know, minus the whole 3D thing. You can explore the hub world and find secrets at your own leisure, there's no time limits and levels, no auto-scrolling screen, it's just you able to complete the goal at your own pace. I only played Super Mario 64 on DS for a little while in high school before shelving it. At the time, 3D platformers weren't really a thing I was into, but I picked it back up again in preparation for this video and I fucking love the game. I adore the premise it's going for, but there was always just something holding it back. When I hear 3D Mario game focus on exploration, I always envision something more akin to Super Mario Odyssey. Speaking of which, it's pretty easy to piece together that the Odyssey in the title isn't just the name for the ship, but it's also the focus of the game. Peach is stolen by the King Koopa himself, surprising nobody. But this time, Bowser intends to marry her, and he takes her from kingdom to kingdom in preparation for the wedding. I don't even want to think how they'd consummate that wedding. That's not something I want to think about right now. And helping him is the Brutals, which is a group of evil rabbits who, I shit you not, double as wedding planners. I love that this is my career. From there on, it's pretty standard affair. You're chasing Bowser and his minions from kingdom to kingdom for the entirety of the game, but I was worried that it'd be just that, standard Mario affair. Just based off of trailers, I was initially worried that worlds such as Wooded Kingdom and Cascade Kingdom 
would be far too similar. Same thing with Lake and Seaside. However, the themes for this title were specifically words like travel and surprises. And thankfully so. Each different kingdom this time around isn't just a different season of the year or element. Surprisingly enough, each area has its own geographical location as well as a civilization and culture to match it. The Sand Kingdom is a desert town with lots of ancient ruins that's based on Mesoamerica. The Snow Kingdom is based off of Russia and has a well-known sport known as Bound Bowl. And the Luncheon Kingdom has the look and aesthetic of a brightly colored food level, but it's actually a fire level. And that's just a small part that showcases how good this game is. In any other Mario title, Cough Cough, these worlds may be the same thing except for different colored enemies and a music change. And Odyssey does have those things, but there's just far more attention to detail in order to make everything feel different to each other while still offering a cohesive experience. And that's the biggest thing I can commend Nintendo on for this game. It takes the stuff that we're used to and alters it in ways that both new and old fans can admire. Like the aforementioned Brutals. You fight each one of them over and over, just like Koopalings or... Actually, I can only think of the Koopalings. <laughs> However, you also have bosses like Madam Brood, Torque Drift, or Mecha Wiggler, and many others that can shake the game up. And all of them are great boss battles, each of them fitting in tone to their respective world. Except for Madame Brood. She had nothing to do with prehistoric times. What the fuck was that about? However, what Kenta Motokura and his team didn't shake up too much was the gameplay. What ain't broke, don't fix it, says the lazy mechanic. Mario moves the same as you expect he would by now in a 3D title. Triple jumps, backflips, side jumps, rolling, all the regular bells and whistles, except for the addition of mind control in the form of a hat. Cappy makes half of this game as fun as it is. It's not just running around as Mario and finding as many moons as you can. It's also about throwing Cappy at certain animals or even devices to open up new possibilities. I've caught myself trying to throw Cappy in Super Mario 64 or even 3D World. Odyssey does its best to make the game have the lowest level of entry. It's the old case of easy to play, hard to master. And the game is almost flawless. Almost. If I had one complaint about gameplay, It'd be the implementation of motion controls. Now, I usually love all kinds of motion controls when it comes to Nintendo games, especially stuff like gyro aiming in Breath of the Wild. It makes the game an absolute breeze. Usually, the game will just ask you to move your controller, or in my case, my Switch Lite. But in Odyssey, it specifically says move the right or left Joy-Con. And when I do use the motion controls, it doesn't ask for a light shake. The game expects you to rattle that shit as hard as you can. I would demonstrate this, but I don't feel like embarrassing myself both auditorily and visually. So just imagine somebody holding a Switch Lite and then just vigorously shaking their entire upper body. Now this would be below average, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. However, the motion controls just decide to not work all the time. If I had to say a percentage, I'd give about a 30% rate of failing. I initially thought that it was an issue specifically for the light, but people have also had issues with the full Joy-Con, which isn't a big deal for throwing Cappy, it just allows you to throw the hat in a circle. Or even if you're capturing something like a Wiggler, where the motion controls just makes you stretch faster, but it does leave forms like Cheap Cheeps completely defenseless, as the motion controls functions as their attack. I would have preferred they use one of the other unused buttons on the controller for some of this stuff instead of just motion controls, but again, it's not the end of the world. Moons are this game's equivalent of stars or star coins, and they are absolutely insane. In something like 3D World, you have to go out of your way to collect them, or in 64, you get them by completing the level. In Odyssey, you get three for defeating bosses and the rest from exploration. They're really fun to collect, and there's an absolute abundance of them. And I'm not just saying that. There's so many. To complete Super Mario Odyssey's main story, you need at least 124 moons. But if you want to see absolutely everything that the game has to offer, like the extra worlds and the postcard at the end, you need over 800. But you can even collect up to 999 moons. Why? Who actually has that much time? I mean, technically all of us do right now, and I'm going to collect all 800 moons, aren't I? While that first number may sound challenging, there's a ton of moons you can find just by exploring, and the limits to move on to the next world are so low that you can probably just run around aimlessly and find the moons you need in about an hour or so. And after completing the campaign, you can even buy an endless amount of moons from shops for 100 coins each. I love this. Yes, I'm going to go around world to world and do my best to collect as many moons as I can because it's fun. But when that fun turns into anger, I'm going to stimulate the hell out of this world's economy. 
This mechanic makes it to where pretty much anybody and everybody can pick up this game. Sure, there's some really BS power moons, but you can always just go find a different one or buy some from the shop. I love giving choices like this, not forcing your players to have to slog through something that they don't want to, simply because it's the way these games have been in the past. There's even in-game achievements, which add that on top of this amazing gameplay, and Mario Odyssey ended up tapping into a completionist spirit I haven't felt since Spider-Man PS4 or Resident Evil 3 Remake. I haven't even mentioned the amazing music in this game. If I was forced to pick a couple of favorites, I'm going for Lake Lamode 1 and Lost Kingdom Isle. But all of this game is amazing. Even the old school remixes of the respective Kingdom songs for the 8 bit sections of the game. I can truly see this soundtrack going down as one of the best of all time for this medium. And you'll know when it does because all the little gaming YouTubers, much like myself, will use it in every single video. Koji Kondo, Naoto Kubo, and Shiho Fuji all deserve to be put in some sort of video game music hall of fame. So does Kate Higgins for Jump Up Superstar. In the two and a half years or so since Odyssey's release, despite not seeking it out, I've somehow memorized the lyrics of the song. And as all the kids say, it's a bop. Speaking of Kate Higgins, why have I never heard of Pauline before Odyssey? Nintendo, I need her in Smash and Mario Kart. And not your mobile knockoff shit, I'm talking Switch, baby. You can't, and I mean can't, look me in the eye and tell me that Rosalina and Daisy deserve to be in Mario Kart, but not Pauline. Hashtag justice for Pauly. I feel like I'm rambling at this point. <laughs> if I had to wrap up this video, I'd say that a good game feels like a vacation. And just like a good vacation, near the end of it, it should feel bittersweet. Regardless of how bullshit some of the platforming sections were, Super Mario Odyssey was everything I expected, and more. It legitimately took me two and a half years to complete my copy of Breath of the Wild, and I'm still probably not done. It's an almost endless game that I can always come back to, and thankfully, lightning struck twice, because I will most likely never put this game down. That's pretty much everything I had to say. This video feels more all over the place than I wanted it to, <laughs> but very few times does the game make me want to talk about its gameplay, and not just about how I feel about it overall. <coughs> Super Mario Odyssey definitely warrants that $50 to $60 price point even after almost three years on the market. If you don't have a copy, then I highly suggest you put it on your list of things to play next. I was gonna say something cute and funny here, but it's fucking hot, and so I have to go. Bye, I'll see you next time. Hashtag Pauline for Smash.